Welcome everyone. My name is Sue Alson to LinkedIn for Women. I'll just turn off the music. Uh, welcome to those of you who know me. Welcome to those who don't know me. Uh, great to have you here. We have over 400 people registered to attend. So I'm going to get straight into it. Now you will receive a copy of the slides. I've already sent a message on LinkedIn. But if anybody else wants the slides, they're on the sueelson.com website in the blog section. And the recording for this presentation will be available later today. I welcome questions in the chat. And this is a Zoom meeting where you don't need to have a camera on, but you're welcome to if you wish. Uh, but there will be questions, so feel free to pop them in the chat at any time if you want to ask me as we go through. And then there'll be a bit of an open floor at the end as well. I plan to cover the top 10 techniques for women and the 10 ways to use LinkedIn for women. By the way, women is anybody, whether you identify as a woman or not as a woman. I'm really hoping that this presentation is educational to everyone. And the main reason I mentioned it was for women is because I'm going to be focusing on a few issues that seem to affect women more specifically. I'd also like to show you 10 ways to manage your LinkedIn activity in 20 minutes per week, because not all of us have hours and hours to spend on LinkedIn. I encourage you to make sure that you have the LinkedIn app on your phone, because I'm going to show you a little trick on how to connect with people in person using the app on your phone. And also I hope to provide awesome value and some items that you can action after this event. My special offer that I give to everybody, I say this right up front, is you can get access to my first four books. Although this first one on LinkedIn was written a few years ago now, it is a strategic document. So you're definitely welcome to go through that. And then I've also created a LinkedIn statistics and backup spreadsheet so you can keep a record of your stats, particularly if you're monitoring on behalf of a company as well. And also my clients have told me the best thing I've ever taught them is to how to create a usernames and passwords list. So there's a spreadsheet for that. And the link at latest offer is so that you can download the books for free at ResearchGate. I also encourage you to follow or subscribe to me online. You can see I'm lagging in the Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and YouTube departments, but fabulous on LinkedIn. So if any of those other platforms are your favourite, then by all means. Um, I must add my new TikTok account there as well. I have started putting some short form video content on TikTok. So you're welcome to check me out there. If you've said true and that you are happy to receive further information from me, when you registered via LinkedIn, you will be added to my um, newsletter mailing list. But of course, you can unsubscribe if that's not relevant. But it does only come out once a month and it gives you the latest tips that I share on um, LinkedIn. Also, I'm going to be participating in a virtual summit with a whole bunch of Australian and New Zealand LinkedIn experts. And so keep an eye out for that. It's going to be amazing value. You're going to hear from multiple LinkedIn experts and yeah, I'll be putting two presentations in there. So just for those of you who don't know, my career started off at Westpac in Adelaide, South Australia. I spent 11 years in the bank before I moved to Melbourne. And since then I've set up Newcomers Network, my first social enterprise in 2001, Camberwell Network in 2012, and officially started my writing career in 2014, 16, you know, it depends which date you pick. And I'm a member of the Melbourne Press Club, the Career Development Association of Australia, Australian Society of Authors, Writers Victoria and the Small Press Network. Plenty more information at sueelson.com if you would like to check that out. So some quick points. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on where all of us meet. And if you would like to mention where you're from in the chat, feel free to wave hello from wherever you are. Uh, and whether you choose an Indigenous name or a, a common name, that's perfectly up to you as well. This presentation is for people of all backgrounds, faiths, genders, race, whatever it is, uh, culture. You're most welcome here. And also, this is general advice, not specific for your personal circumstances. If you'd like that, please reach out to me. Um, it's just general information, although I believe very useful. The slides and video will be, uh, as I said, available later today. You can leave your video and microphone off in case we do get more than 100 people coming through. I just like to make sure that everybody gets access. We can have up to 500 people on the call. It's always interesting to see how many can attend live. 
Um, I'm going to assume there's a very level of knowledge and experience, but that you can also read, as I said, questions in the chat. And I will love to know what's been most helpful to you at the end. So if you're ready to sort of make a little note on that, that would be fabulous. And I'd also recommend that you find a way to say thank you. Now, the simplest way is just to visit my LinkedIn profile and vote for my LinkedIn skills. Uh, that would be fabulous. Oh, so we've got some people here from Melbourne, the Gold Coast, um, another Melbourne, New Zealand. Excellent. I'm so hoping I can get to New Zealand next year. There's a conference over there that I'd like to attend. They haven't told me the date yet. So, you know, Career Development Association New Zealand, tell us the date. I want to book my flights. Uh, Charleston uh, in USA. Excellent. Wollongong in New South Wales, part of Australia. Sydney. Excellent. Great to see so many people. Tasmania. Yes, I saw lots of people registering from Tasmania. That's great. Uh, Texas, wintry Melbourne, yes, it's very cold. Bendigo, Michelle, I was in Bendigo on Sunday. It was fabulous. Freeling in South Australia, I'm originally from Adelaide. So, yeah, fantastic to welcome you all here. Thank you for joining us. And as I said, the presentation is for women, anyone who identifies as a woman, anyone who lives, works, networks with women. Um, and these are suggestions and recommendations based on my experience both with my clients and with my students. It is also suitable for people um, who've, who've had challenges. Uh, I got a message this morning from somebody who said that, you know, they wanted to block who was accessing their profile. And I presume that was because of, you know, a personal matter. So yes, I do deal with some of those inquiries from time to time. But I'd also like to sort of highlight the fact that some of us women have more challenges online than others, and it's good for everyone to know what those challenges could be and to treat us all more respectfully. This uh, concept was triggered by a presentation I did to a local girls' school. I go there every year for the year 12 or final year secondary students, and it's been really interesting working with those young women. And one particular person didn't want to have a LinkedIn profile at all, but she, going to that school, invite, encouraged me, I guess, to write uh, an article on LinkedIn for women. So that's the first one. But her business also interviewed me, and there's top 20 LinkedIn techniques for business women that you can check out. And then uh, Ruby Connection is a service provided by Westpac Bank, where I bank, and this was where I was working, and top tips for women in their working career. So that's the archive version. The original version is not on the website anymore. But because I copy paste my links to archive.org slash web, there remains a permanent copy on the internet of that content and it's still relevant. So feel free to check those out as well. Much easier to click from the slide, so don't bother typing it out now. So some very, very specific women's tips before I go into the more general 10 ones. I found that a lot of women feel that they cannot declare their capability unless they believe that they have 100% capability. Now, I'd like to suggest that none of us have 100% capability in anything, but if we have 60% competency, I would really, really, really encourage you to consider listing it on your LinkedIn profile. Um, even if you knew everything to do with a particular job or a business or whatever, I still believe if you started somewhere new tomorrow, it would take six months before you became unconsciously competent. So yeah, 100% doesn't exist. In fact, I like to say aim for 80% in everything. That's kind of good enough. And in terms of grades, 80% is an A. So, you know, go for it. Also, I do not recommend that you mention how many years of experience you've had. If it's three years, it might be too few. If it's 30 years, it might be too many. Just mention the areas of expertise that you have. So I have expertise in the area of A, B, C, and then you can be perceived as a guru, which is much better than too old or too young or some other variation. I definitely encourage you to support other people, including your competitors. Now, I've been in the online world since 2001, so over 20 years, and I know there's not many people who've been that active online for that many years, and I've seen lots of things change. But one of the things I learned very early on is that the online world is different to the real world. And in the um, real world, everybody keeps their cards very close to their chest and doesn't let anybody know what's going on. But in the online world, you kind of have to declare your cards and put them on the table and let people know what you are about. Now, that may sound counterintuitive, but I'm not for everyone and everybody's not for me. So 
we all end up finding our little channel somewhere in all of that. So encourage others. Uh, that's why this virtual summit of LinkedIn experts is happening because we all value each other's contribution to helping people use LinkedIn in a better way. And we really want to up the ante and encourage more of this information sharing so that people can maximise their use of LinkedIn. Also, if you do make any comments or you write a recommendation, be specific. Don't say Sue's fabulous. Just say, what was it that you liked about Sue? And be very specific. That helps the person receiving that feedback as well. You can also develop a motto that you operate by. So mine is friendly and professional. So when you meet me live, I'll explain anything you like, but I don't talk about my personal life uh, online. It just doesn't feel right. And I've seen a lot of people do it. And sadly, I saw one person get up and say she'd broken up with her boyfriend and she was feeling terrible and she'd got drunk. And she put this post on LinkedIn and I thought, that really doesn't do you any favours. And I understand that uh, different generations have different perspectives on sharing who they are as a person. And, and I prefer to leave that for personal interactions rather than online. Now, that doesn't mean I'm not approachable. I definitely am and I'm willing to help, um, but I, I don't share those details. That's my motto. You, you come up with yours. I also encourage you to join and support a professional association in your area of expertise or for you as a personal development thing. Now, if you are still a student, you can join. It's much, much cheaper. But I believe everybody should be part of a professional association and to reap the benefits of getting access to new insights and information that comes out on a regular basis. You also need to remember that LinkedIn is a database. And if you don't put information in there that people can use to find you, all those key words that you want to be found for, then you won't be able to attract those opportunities. So why should you even bother with LinkedIn? Well, you will be Googled and LinkedIn is highly optimised for a name search. So if you Google someone's name and they've got a LinkedIn profile and they've changed their URL, I'll show you how to do that, um, it's likely to come up in search results unless you have a very, very common name. I also like to encourage everybody to have their own website. Now, don't feel bad if you don't have one. I got my sueelson.com in 2012 and I started online in 2001. So that's probably 11 years after I went online. But if you don't want to pay for anything, you can go to business.google.com and you can set up a little profile there for free. There's over 830 million members worldwide. I'm member number 77832. So I'm one of the first 80,000 people in the world on LinkedIn. I joined on the 21st of December 2003 when I was running Newcomers Network and looking for international networks. And I found LinkedIn way back then. But what's been really interesting is over the last three years, the number of people using LinkedIn, particularly here in Australia, has increased and average users per month has increased. But also a lot more people are developing profiles. And I heard from another LinkedIn trainer recently the, the majority of people on LinkedIn are now under the age of 35, which is super exciting, if you ask me. So um, great that there's a good cross section of the entire community on LinkedIn. And in Australia, there's about 26 million people in the population and 17 million have LinkedIn profiles. So that's pretty impressive as well. Also, no job or enterprise is forever. No matter how secure you think your job is, it's not. You do need to build a network so that if the worst happens, then obviously you can reach out and, you know, let your network know that you're looking for new opportunities. And it also keeps you up to date with what's happening, helps you promote your own personal brand, share insights and information that other people in your network may be interested in. So let's get straight into the top tech, 10 techniques for women. Um, you can count them as we go through and give yourself a big pat on the back for every one of them that you are doing. You can give me a number out of 10 at the end if you wish. Uh, feel free to pop that in the chat. So one of the biggest issues that women have is deciding who they will connect with. Now, I run these LinkedIn webinars every month and the number of women who actually did not connect with me before the event was significant. And that really made me think, why are people reluctant to connect with one another on LinkedIn? My policy is to say, well, if they're in Australia, I pretty much always say yes, unless I think they're going to hound me with annoying messages or sales or something like that. 
But I also like to make sure that they have a photo on their profile, they've got a reasonable amount of detail, a reasonable number of connections, and that they're not too pushy in that sales area. And if they meet all of those criteria, I pretty much always say yes. If they don't and they're in some foreign country and I think they want to sell me web development services or something like that, then I'll pretty much say no. They can still follow me and receive my updates, but I don't add them to my actual network. You can have up to 30,000 connections. If anybody becomes a nuisance, you can remove the connection. You can also block the connection and you can connect with individuals. You can follow company pages. Now, if you want to work for a particular organisation in the future, definitely recommend that you follow their company page and definitely recommend that you engage with their social media content. You can also find anyone on LinkedIn using a Google advanced search. So when you search for someone on LinkedIn, it might be your best friend from 10 years ago at school and you can't find them because you're not connected to anybody they're connected to. But if you go to Google advanced search and you put their name in quotation marks and you get the Google advanced search to look specifically at the website linkedin.com, then you might be able to find them that way. So I love Google advanced search. You can also have an unlimited number of searches. So it can be a really great prospecting technique if you want to use LinkedIn as a research tool for that sort of thing as well. Now, another thing that people say, oh yes, I know I should fill in my profile, but they kind of never get around to it. And then they also feel very uncomfortable talking about their achievements. And I've done some work with an organization uh, that is specifically for women. And they often make the comment that the men in that industry talk about their achievements, but the women in that industry do not talk about theirs. And this is, you know, very disappointing. Obviously, you cannot include commercially sensitive information. If there's something that you've done that the public should not be knowing about, then obviously you cannot talk about that. But you can talk in terms of percentages, increase the profitability by 24%, not $6.5 million. You know, that, that would be commercially sensitive. So you can talk to those things. Anything that you did very well in your role is an achievement, as well as anything additional that you did in your role. So maybe you were seconded to a different department, you were invited to represent, you were uh, you initiated something, any of these things that are over and above what you were initially brought in to do, whether that be an enterprise or an employment, um, you can mention that as an achievement. I also encourage you to complete as many sections as possible. The easiest one is languages. Um, and I did French at school for five years, so I've popped that in there as well. The only section I have not filled in is patents because I don't have one. So if you want to stalk my LinkedIn profile and see how I filled it in, by all means do that. You have my full permission and blessing to borrow any ideas you like from my LinkedIn profile. Now, LinkedIn initiated a new thing this year called the career break option. And you might think, well, if you've taken time out to do some study or look after children or look after a family member, or travel the world, who knows, whatever it is. Um, you, there's the, all these different options to put in a career break. Now, I don't like the option because I feel the categories define you and don't really give you enough scope to describe all the things that you've done. And I've worked with a number of people who've had some unusual circumstances. For example, one person um, had to take time out because they were recovering from cancer. Now, the first question I asked that person was, what did you learn? And it was amazing. They had learned how to cook raw foods. They had studied a language. They had done research. They had done some travel. They had done all these incredible things from day one to day 400, whatever it was. And so what we did is we summarized all of those things in the one experience section we could put dates, we could add in all the features, whereas the career break option doesn't allow you to have that much information. Now, the other thing that happens with the algorithm is the algorithm prefers candidates who are currently working. So if you're on a career break, that tells the algorithm you're not working. And then when somebody looks at it, that's not as interesting. So I suggest if you're not working at the moment and you would like to be, 
that you mentioned that your current job is career research in the areas that you would like to work. So then the algorithm believes that you are currently in work and you've got a much greater chance of appearing in search results. So if you want to read more about that, click on the link. Also, uh, the entire presentation, Alex, thank you uh, for popping that link in the chat. I oh, appreciate your online support there. Um, yes, and Camilla, all these links are in the online presentation. It's a PDF. You can download it right now and follow along on your device if you wish. So customizing your LinkedIn URL. I'm going to quickly go into LinkedIn to show you how to do this. So well, apologies, it is live. So you're going to see all sorts of things pop up on my screen. So oh, Indy can't get through. My goodness, not to worry. So when you are on your LinkedIn profile, we'll just wait for the internet to catch up with my mouse clicks. We'll get rid of those messages. And when you're on your LinkedIn profile, on the top right hand side, it says edit your public profile and URL. So we'll just click on my face. Edit public profile and URL. And when you get your automatic one from LinkedIn, it will be your first name, dash last name, and a whole bunch of numbers and letters. Now, if you leave it that way, it looks a little bit clunky, but also it doesn't optimize your name in Google search results. So all you need to do when you get into this side here is there's a pen that appears here and you can click on it and you can change it. Now, if your first and last name is not available, you could try putting a dash between the first two or you can try putting a number on the end, or you might want to put your post nominals, like I have a Bachelor of Business. Whatever you do, just edit it so that it has been personalised and then save it. And that will then look much nicer on your resume, CV, um, any email signatures, whatever. But that is one of the most important things to do on your LinkedIn profile, quick and easy and very, very worthwhile. The next one is to edit your headline and banner. You will see here that I've got a picture of my four books off to the side so that my face still appears there with a bit of white space around it. If you're going to put a banner in here, I suggest you allow for when your face goes into the middle of a screen on a mobile device. So it's going to block off a little bit of the book, but it's not going to worry me too much. And it also... Your actual photo needs to be mostly your head and shoulders with your hair at the top of a circle, your eyes on the one third line and with a higher neck garment. Now you can see I've got my jacket on here. This would have looked better if I had a high neck garment coming up to here a little bit more because what that would have done is it would have framed my face. So you can see today I'm wearing a nice high neck garment and uh, yeah, it's just much better if you can do that. Now. Um, if you're not a CEO, but you want to be, you can still come up in CEO search results if you put the word aspiring in front of it or future or intentional CEO, whatever it is that you would like to do. So the, the first part of the headline is what everybody sees in the news feed if you are engaging with the content or you're sharing your own content. So really, really worthwhile to have that there. But then my sort of methodology is to then include any keywords that you want to be found for. So um, here I've just made up some leadership management operations, governance, risk compliance, senior executive. This is a qualification or here in Australia and a membership association in Australia. So if somebody was looking for those specific things, they would appear because this, this headline is the number one box that LinkedIn uses to find people on the platform. So you've really got to have your keywords in there. It's nice to say, I help people achieve amazing outcomes and help the enterprise achieve its goals. I mean, that's a lovely statement, but it's not going to help you appear in search results. So I'm much more inclined to encourage you to put keywords that you wish to be found for. And you will be able to see that it's attracting more people to your profile because the number of views per 90 days should increase. And then I like to suggest you put something in at the end about you as a person. I've put in that I'm a dancer. Believe it or not, I've actually come up in search results for dancing. And unfortunately, nobody's contacted me for my dancing services, which is probably a very good thing. Um, but anyway, I do it because I'm a woman of a certain age. I'm 57 and proud of it. And I want people to know that I'm fit and active and 
living my life and still providing amazing value to people. So that sort of enforces that message for me. And I feel comfortable sharing that piece of information about me. And I hope it makes me friendly and approachable to people. If you would like more of a description on the headline formula, feel free to click on that link. The next one is to add in some multimedia. So you can only do this on your mobile phone app. And what you can do is you can add a 30 second video. So you just in the app, click on your face and then you can add that video. And then you can also next to your name, you can put a little audio pronunciation. So my name is fairly straightforward to pronounce, but some people have a name that a lot of people may not know how to pronounce. So it's nice to include that and people get to hear your voice, which is also nice. You can also put some video links in the featured section. And that's a picture of one of my books and, you know, me talking about my book. So I've popped that in there as well. As I said earlier, join and or follow any professional associations. There are a lot of things you can do to showcase your professional membership on LinkedIn by putting it in the licenses and certification section, as well as the organization section, as well as the contact info section. Now, some associations give you your own personal page on their website. So I have one of those for the Career Development Association of Australia. So I've linked to that. So that means people know that I'm you know, definitely a member. So that's really good things to, to put on and showcase your expertise. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I first of all, I don't want to fill up my LinkedIn profile. But secondly, I don't want to have to do more social media. Well, I'm here to suggest that if you just engage with other people's content, you'll probably be just as popular, if not more popular, than if you're posting content. So the algorithm favours people who engage online because let's face it, the platform wants more people on there more often. And if you're liking people's stuff, people say, oh, that was nice that Sue liked my post. And then, you know, people think fondly of you. So nothing wrong with that. If you can write a comment, uh, even better. But there's other things you can do. You can share information that is helpful, that is in your area of expertise that other people might be interested in as well. You can endorse people for their skills and you can also write recommendations. And none of this requires you to produce any content. The second stage, if you're up for it, is to find content from somewhere else and share it as a post. Don't forget to add in hashtags, which helps people find that content. And then the third stage is where you do prepare your own content and you share it as a post, which goes in the newsfeed, or you write an article, which is like having your own blog on LinkedIn and stays there permanently, it can be found in Google search results. You can also run events like this one. You can also create a newsletter. There are video lives that you can do, audio lives are coming, and you can even send out messages uh, to people in your network. So I tried to email 400 and something people today with the, the Zoom link and the email program just would not let me send out my emails. It said I was, you know, spamming people. So I manually messaged everybody who'd registered for this event today. So um, messaging can be very helpful if no other way can get through. So when you see the start a post option on your screen, if you click in that grey box, instead of just having four options like you've got here, you can click the three dots and then you end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine options of content that you can share. So keep that in mind. I love this add a document where you can save your PowerPoint presentation to PDF and then it becomes like a clickable slideshow. I quite like that one. But, you know, the better quality the content, the more likely people will see it. So if it's just a sales pitch, it's probably not going to go down too well. Uh, Linair Johnston put up a post today saying that people who share their personal stories and put up a picture of themselves seems to be going very well at the moment. So it's another one. But if you want to learn more about this, again, click on that link and you can read more. I have also created a company page for my name. And you might think, well, that's kind of strange, Sue. But the problem with posting information in the news feed is that it disappears and nobody can ever go back and look at it, at least, you know, not unless they just scroll, scroll, scroll all the time. And even then the newsfeed might not give them my content. But if I post my content on my own company page, people can visit my company page and see the sorts of things that I post about. So you can see here, I've managed to secure 515 followers 
on my company page, even though I'm obviously the only employee. So um, yeah, it's kind of cool. But if you would like to know some more tips on how to maximize your company profile, go there or check out the content by Michelle J. Raymond. She does amazing stuff on company pages. Now there are a number of settings you can change in the back end of LinkedIn. Now, if you have any job interview and you wanna check someone out, but you don't want them to know that you've looked at them, you can go into this visibility section and you can turn yourself anonymous. And then when you're finished, you can turn yourself back on because on the free account, you need to be turned on to be able to see the last five people who've looked at your LinkedIn profile. There's a couple of other settings I recommend. So if you follow these four links, the first one will I recommend is you turn off people also viewed because if you visit my LinkedIn profile, I don't want you to visit all my competitors immediately. So I've turned that one off. I also turn off autoplay videos. So when I'm out and about on my phone, I'm not chewing up all my data. And also selecting your profile visibility. So this, that's this one here, depending on the needs basis. And then also um, uh, whether or not you would like to share your updates with people, there's another setting for that. Now, if you do find yourself in an uncomfortable situation, you can immediately turn off the visibility of your LinkedIn profile. Now, that was on that same page where we changed the URL. But if you do this and somebody still has the link to your profile, they can still see it. So if you want to completely disappear off the internet for a period of time, what you can do is you can temporarily deactivate your account and it's called Hibernate and that setting is available there. If you would like to consider doing um, creator mode, which helps you pick five hashtags and gives you access to newsletters and LinkedIn lives. Um, I've got some content on LinkedIn for creators from a webinar I did for the LinkedIn local group in Wayne, New Jersey. Shout out to Kenneth Lang who got me on for, for that one. Now, the other thing, as I mentioned, you've got that free statistics download that you can download from the latest offer section of my website. And it is a really good idea to write down your stats because all of your stats are real time only. So if you don't write them down now and then make all your updates and then check again, you're not going to see whether anything has changed or improved. So you can see a quick screenshot here of what my stats were on the 10th of May and I wrote those numbers down. So if I check again on the 10th of August, then I can see what has happened over three months and see whether, yeah, things are improving. Um, so that's really good to keep an eye on that as well. So ways you can use LinkedIn. Well, I'm definitely going to encourage you to increase your engagement ratio. So as I said earlier, if you're liking people's stuff, people are gonna kind of like you, that's kind of lovely. And now, instead of just having a thumbs up, you can do a clap the hands, support. There's a new one, which is, says, it's funny. So I don't write too much funny content because I've worked with people from many different cultural backgrounds. And the one thing I've learned from that is what one person finds funny, somebody else finds terribly offensive. So I tend not to use humor unless it's live and in person and I can sort of judge the crowd. But um, yeah, there is this funny one. So if something is funny, feel free to use it. Love heart, insightful. This one means curious, the, the sort of quizzy face. I feel that one is a little bit passive aggressive. So I'm definitely reluctant to use that one. But what I've also noticed, and this was very much needed, is I can either comment as myself or I can comment as a company profile that I manage. So because I run Newcomers Network and Candlewell Network and 120 Ways Publishing, then I can sort of switch over from just being Sue to one of those other profiles and then comment as an organisation. And I really like that new feature that's come out just within the last couple of months. Now, if you're part of an organisation, do you support posts made by women in that organisation? Do you support women's organisations? I mean, I know one woman who refuses to have anything to do with an organisation that's only for women. She believes that everybody should be supporting everyone. Um, but if you haven't done this in the past and something fabulous happens at work, why not let the media, communications, whoever the person is, marketing, know about that and provide some photos and 
um, behind the scenes, stories, whatever, so that the company page can put out that information. Also, if any of the women have been involved in awards, specialist achievements, notable activity, uh, feel free to get that message out there. It's a really great way to support yourself and the other women around. If you would like to make your post go more viral, feel free to check that link out there. Now, there are many, many tools and techniques you can use on LinkedIn. And if you are going to share content, you can see here that I've put little green tick emojis in this post. I've done an at mention for Fueled by Growth. I've used capital letters for the title of this post. I've made sure that when the, uh, the link to the article appears here, um, people can click on it and I've put in some hashtags. So yeah, it's quite a nice post. It got some reasonable engagement. But you can do other things as well. You can run events, you can set up newsletters. Polls were very popular a while back. They've lost a little bit of their flavour. But you can add articles, you can upload video directly, you can upload audio. Maybe you've got a, a snippet from a podcast, you can pop that in. So think about the different types of content you could share. Um, and again, you know, experiment. I'm currently experimenting with short form video content, which I shoot in portrait mode. So it's suitable for mobile devices. And that's been getting some good interest. Interestingly, not as much interest as I expected because I thought because it was mobile optimized, it would really work. I also upload all my videos to YouTube and I get captions so that when I upload them into the platform, I can include captions on my videos as well so that my content is universally accessible to people of all abilities, which I think is also very, very important. Now, if you haven't done it within the last 12 months, now I suggest is a very good time for you to update your LinkedIn profile. A lot can change in a year. There can be a whole bunch of achievements that you haven't kept a record of. And let me assure you, if you don't write them down, you're likely to forget about them. Also, anything you've done on a voluntary basis, feel free to add that in. And if you've got some very important people in your network, these are the people who've been your champions, your mentors, your advisors, try and reach out to them about three times a year to maintain your relationship. And don't forget to add connections. So from now on, I encourage you, everyone you meet personally or professionally, to connect with them. So you've got your phone with you most of the time. You can whip it out and you can press in the search box up the top of the screen. And then you click on those little dots on the right hand side and then you choose scan. So uh, the first time you do it, you have to turn on camera access. So you do that. This is for an iPhone, but it's, you know, obviously fairly similar on an Android. So you turn on the settings. And then once you do that, you scan the code. And when you visit a person's profile, there will either be a blue follow or connect button, a message button or the three dots. Now, I'm going to suggest you choose the three dots and you choose personalize invite. And then you say, nice to meet you wherever you've met them. So this morning I ran Camberwell Network. So nice to meet you at Camberwell Network this morning. Let's connect. And then you send the invitation. So that way, if they can't remember your name, they can say, well, I do remember going to that Camberwell Network. So I'll just search my messages for everybody, anybody who said Camberwell in it, and that will help me find that person again. So if you want to experiment and do this now with your mobile device, there's the scan code. If we're not already connected, definitely encourage you to do it. And you can just say when you personalize the invite that you found me via this LinkedIn Insights webinar. Um, but if you meet my criteria, I'll, I'll say yes to connecting anyway. Now, the other thing that I think is very important, and any coach will tell you, if you do not set goals, you will not necessarily get the results you're after. So make some choices. Who do you want to reach, serve or support? Do this before you start publishing. And I was working with this amazing woman who was referred to me recently. And I asked her a few questions before we started working on our LinkedIn profile. And within five minutes, she had a clear direction for her future, which is to be an advocate for people in regional, rural and remote areas in the area of aged care. And by the end of the session, she was so excited that she now knew what she was doing for the future 
that when she was going to start her LinkedIn profile, because she hasn't had one before, she knew what to write in it. It is so much easier if you know what your objective is. Now, you could be saying, but Sue, you know, I've been doing this and that and I'm tired and I don't know what to do next and my life is a mess, whatever. That's fine. Just do a catalogue of everything you've done up until now. And that will be a great opportunity for you to pat yourself on the back and say, oh, yeah, I did that. Oh, yeah, and then I did that as well. Actually, maybe I have achieved a lot. And I've been talking to a few new people recently and they've been asking me all these questions and I've actually realised my life is way more interesting than I thought it was because I was telling them stories about flying on a trapeze in the city square and going up in an ultralight plane where the only thing between me and the ground was a seatbelt and I went surfing recently and I'm going to go quad bike riding and I'm thinking, hmm, my life is actually more interesting than I thought. So please, if you're not sure where to start, just fill in what you've done up until now. And even if you're really right at the beginning of your career, there's still plenty of things you can talk about, sports activities, work experience, any clubs you've been involved in, all of that can go on your LinkedIn profile. You can also fill in the section open to providing services. So I haven't had a real job since 1994. So I haven't had an employer since then. I've had lots of clients. Um, but yeah, you can definitely consider that as a career option as well or as a side hustle or something you start now and get part-time and move to full-time later. If you are part of an organisation, obviously you're going to need to abide by their social media policy. One law firm I went to said everybody had to delete their profile when they joined. I thought, well, that's not true because a LinkedIn profile belongs to you, not your employer. But anybody I do work for, I do try and support online. So I've been teaching for the Centre for Adult Education and Social Media College. So when I see their content, obviously I engage with it and support their work as well. And then obviously I try and connect with other people in the, those enterprises so that I can be up to date with everything that's going on. Now, I love writing. Well, pretty obvious when you've already written five books and I'm aiming for my first 10 before I classify myself as an author. But um, you can write articles. And one article I wrote is, should you pay for social media ads? And the reason I wrote this is there's a lot of businesses who just think, I'll oh, pay for some Google ads or Facebook ads and you get business. Well, it's absolutely not true. Um, you might, but I heard one person spend $15,000 on Google ads and got not one client out of it. The best way to get business if you're starting out is word of mouth. And, you know, pay for a breakfast for 10 people. Um, you'd be amazed how much work you might get out of that. And breakfast is better than lunch because no alcohol will be involved. But there's a little article I've written there about should you pay for social media ads. So before you rush out and think, I won't fill it in, I'll just pay for ads, uh, please read that article first. Also, bring your artistic flair to LinkedIn. Bring your story to life as only you can. Now, if you do have an enterprise, your website is your number one asset. That's the only thing you control, the only thing you own, and the only thing that you can update in whatever way you want. But if you want your website to work, Google expects you to have a social media presence, it expects you to have links on other websites, it expects you to have links on directories, and it also expects you to have reviews online. So just having a LinkedIn profile is a great way to start an enterprise, and you can literally start with a free LinkedIn account and a free Google business account. But if you go to that next stage and you have a website, then you're going to need to be active to make sure that that website appears in search results and leads to opportunities as well. And also remember that the platforms like you to keep turning up. So that's why I want to show you how you can manage your activity in 20 minutes a week. So first of all, you would log on and engage with the news feed. Take about eight minutes for that. And I invite you to make two reactions and write one reasonably lengthy comment. If it's linking to an article, make sure you've clicked, check the link, make sure it's all okay, and then make a comment. And yeah, the algorithm will love you for being involved. Check out your notifications. Sometimes there might be a few, sometimes there might be a lot, but just see if there's anything of interest. Check out your network connection requests and event invitations and decide whether you'd like to go to those events or subscribe to the newsletters or connect with those people. Look at what your employer has done or do something for your enterprise. Spend two minutes on that. 
it, it'll update your own profile. Maybe there's a spelling mistake or you want to add in an achievement or something like that. You could once a week post an item in the news feed if you feel comfortable doing that. The main thing is just to do those reactions and comments. Um, but, you know, if not, once every three months, you could publish an article and you could share that. You know, it's another way to have some content going up. And also check out your stats and think about who could you endorse, who could you recommend. Remember that recommendations are written and can be used in court. So don't say anything that you're not prepared to say in court. But lots of people don't think to write recommendations. So that can be a, you know, a really good way to connect with people. And if you would like to get updates on what's happening with LinkedIn, feel free to subscribe to my newsletter. So where to from here? I'll be asking you if you've got any questions. So please get them ready. Pop them in the chat now. I'll answer them in the order they appear. No question is stupid. If you don't want me to mention your name when I announce the question, just message me privately and I'll just ask answer the question. I won't sort of say who said it, um, but yeah, uh, feel free. So first of all, I have written heaps and heaps of content and for different types of audiences. So check out my publications or if you prefer videos, today's recording will be at that link, suelson.com slash blog, and then it's the top one, LinkedIn for Women. The next LinkedIn Insight webinar will be on the 10th of August at midday Melbourne time, which is LinkedIn for students and future graduates. This is one of the fastest growing demographics on the platform. And there are a lot of things that students are not doing because they think they don't have to say this stuff. But look, if you want opportunities and you can share your story well, um, I'm finding a lot of good students who do this work before they graduate are actually getting job offers before they leave university. So really, really worthwhile. I'll also be at the Melbourne Career Expo on Sunday, this very Sunday, the 18th of July, between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. I'm doing two live presentations on LinkedIn and um, how to choose your next job or career. And it's free event if you register at careerexpo.com.au. Um, so Sunday the 18th in Melbourne, you're most welcome to join me. And presentations, you can see previous presentations I've published. And if you would like some personal assistance, it's Australian 175 per hour for up to two people. And if we're doing it online, which is probably easier nowadays, given how much uh, COVID is around, um, it can be recorded and you can rewatch it. Uh, if in case I went through anything too quickly, you can just watch the recording and uh, do it again. So uh, there's all the previous ones I've run. So if you click on the recording link, you can go through and watch the back catalogue. You will see some information that is similar on each one, but each one also talks very specifically to those individual professionals. So uh, feel free to check those out at any time. They're all free. You don't have to give your email address. You can check them out anytime you like. Don't forget to download the books if they're of interest. Um, this one's obviously linked in. This one is very story driven about attracting the right career or business, particularly for people who are uncertain about what they want to do next. Uh, the, the third one on marketing your business hyperlocally is case study driven. And Gigsters is this journey I've been on where I don't have a regular job. But there are some people who are employees, some people are experts, and some people are entrepreneurs. And I've created these little 16 personas, uh, or sorry, 12 personas. And uh, you might identify with that and just gives you some tips on how to be an entrepreneur or how to be a digital nomad and, and things like that. Um, and one of the keys is to manage your money, let me tell you. But I've also got some poetry in that. My next two books are going to be poetry based. Don't forget to follow or subscribe to me online. Would love to see you there. And if you'd like to say thank you, you can scan that little code there and write me a Google review. I've got 111 I've asked thousands of people, students, clients, whatever, to write me reviews. I've got 111. So they're, they're hard to come by, but I very much appreciate them. Or you could write a LinkedIn recommendation, or you could just do an endorsement on my LinkedIn profile. So if something has been useful to you today, uh, find a way to say thank you. But also, if you need to ask for something for free, I mean, some people are in difficult personal circumstances, and they might not feel confident asking for help. Well, you can ask for help and there might be something you can offer. So I wrote this article for people who, you know, want to be able to get out there and, and get some assistance. A lot of people, if you ask nicely and offer something in exchange, 
are more than happy to assist. But if you just expect somebody to give something to you for free, that, that's possibly unrealistic. So, yeah, feel free to check that article out as well. So now we're up to question time. So I really hope to see some questions either popping through in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. If you would like to turn on your camera, you are welcome to do so now. You can unmute and I'll see you pop up on my screen. And uh, yeah, we'll go through some questions. So, um, oh, I have got some questions here. This is great. Okay, let's see. We'll go to the top of the list. Oh, by the way, if you do write some feedback in the chat, I copy paste this onto the event page as well. So if you would like your name to be mentioned, um, then, you know, I can also highlight you as, as a participant who came um, and so on. So entire presentation, great to meet you all. Thank you, Kakila. Um, right, so on, Catherine asked a question about instead of the news feeder as well as, if I share content online, I add it to the news feed as me as a person and I add it to my Sue Olson company page as well. Now, the content that goes out on my personal news feed usually goes further than the stuff that's on the company page, uh, but I still do it anyway because I love having that back catalogue available on the company page. Oh, Kakila is also interested in connecting with anybody. So if you want to check that out in the um, uh, chat, you can do so. How many hashtags should be included in a post? Chris, my favourite recommendation is three to five. Um, I heard from somebody else today that LinkedIn recommends three to five. I heard from another LinkedIn trainer only put in three because then they may appear in the link to the post. But I definitely wouldn't, wouldn't be putting 10 or 20 in. I mean, that's just a bit annoying. So, so don't go that one. I like to include hashtag Sue Elson in a lot of my posts. So if anybody wants to click and see my other content, they can do that very quickly through the hashtag. Uh, brilliant info as always, Sue. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Donna. Lovely to have you with us. What is a good banner to include? Amanda, great question. I'm going to quickly show you a profile um, that has a plain banner, but I think you will agree it really looks good uh, because... What's happened is we've chosen a colour that is the same as the uh, garment that Carmen is wearing. So it's just a nice blue and it just makes her photo pop. And I think this is a really nice thing to have. Now, if you're going to have the company logo there, I suggest you put it on the right hand side over here. Um, so that when your face slides across on a mobile device, there's, there's still room for your face to appear. But you can see how this just looks all very harmonious by being the same colour. I'm not a huge fan of complicated pictures because people end up looking at the picture instead of at you. And the whole goal is for people to look at you um, instead of that. Now, what I do on most people's profiles when we're starting out is I just put a white one in there. So again, it draws the eye to the person's face. Um, so yeah, that's another option. Uh, wondering your thoughts on the free version of LinkedIn versus the premium and is it worth it? Great question. So I only purchased LinkedIn premium in September, 2021. So I've only had it for just over a year. And I figured that because I'm a LinkedIn specialist, I should probably purchase it. And the main reason I purchased it was so that I could see the last 90 days of people who've looked at my profile and then reach out to those people and say, thanks for stopping by. Um, here's something that may be of interest to you. Now, I haven't done that as much as I probably could, but there are other benefits. I can do greater searches. I'm more likely to appear higher in the list of job applicants. I can send five in-mails per month, which is a message directly to somebody I don't know. But I found it very annoying when I went to purchase LinkedIn Premium because they tried to slot me into LinkedIn Business Premium, which I actually didn't need, which was more expensive than the Jobs and Careers one. So please do some good quality research. I would suggest in the first instance, you do everything I recommend and do your networking, do all those other things first, because let's face it, from 2003 to 2021, I did everything I do on LinkedIn on the free account. Now, don't feel guilty about not paying for it either, because the more people who are on the platform and contributing, the better that is for everybody else who's here. So, uh, yeah, hope that helps. 
How helpful is it to endorse other people's skills? Um, look, it's not a big deal breaker, but it's kind of nice. Now, if a LinkedIn specialist endorses me for LinkedIn, then that's going to be better. And if they work at the same organisation I do, that's going to be better. When the endorsements first came out, everybody thought we were descending into the Facebook path and it was a waste of time and people were only doing it to attract interest. But I believe that if you've got a lot of votes for a skill, then maybe at least 50% of the people are truthful, even if, you know, 50% were not. So people get a sense of what your capability is. Now, Alison, I would suggest that the top three skills you mention need to be aligned with your goals and purpose. So if I don't mention writing, which is what I want to be, a writer, then that's not going to be very helpful to me. So I do want endorsements for those um, so that people know that that's the direction I'm heading in. When adding a video on my company page, should I also do in the feed as well or will it show in the feed anyway? Okay, so when you add a video, it will go to your company page, but unless you choose to share it to your personal profile, it's not going to show there. Now, sometimes if a company post is amazing, it might end up in the general news feed, but not always. So again, Catherine, I would suggest as publish as you, publish on the company page. Uh, and I found that it works better if you publish both individually than if you share from one to the other, but you can share from one to the other as well. Thank you, Kakila. This is great. Thank you, Camila. Okay, I learned a lot of new information to apply. I wear a face veil. It's been a long seven months of finding a job, but no success yet. I'd like to know if adding my photo is jeopardizing my chance of landing a job. Okay, now this is probably going to depend on the country where you're applying for jobs and whether or not a face veil is commonly used in that location. If it is, well, then I suggest you could, you know, it's probably standard procedure. Now, if you think it has been detrimental to you, you could put up a, um, uh, a picture from somewhere else. And for instance, one of my clients has a picture of herself wearing sunglasses and looking away with her hair over her face. Now you could have a scarf over your face. And so it's impossible to tell what she actually looks like, but she still has a photo there. And another person has actually taken photos of them at work. So it's again, hard to tell what's happening. So these are all options for you. But I would suggest the main reason you're not getting work is not just because of a photo. And I realize up to 65% of the time on a LinkedIn profile is spent looking at the photo. But the interesting thing is that um, when you've, you've got a photo there, they can look at it. But if you're not appearing in search results because, you know, your headline didn't say enough and the rest of your profile doesn't tell your whole story, even if they land there, whether they like the photo or not, if your profile doesn't do its work, then that's going to potentially prevent you from getting work. Uh, is the 30 second video on the free version? Yes, it is, Catherine. Uh, you just got to do it on your mobile phone. As you mentioned about writing articles, I like to know how can an amateur write like myself check for content quality and flow without having a proofreader on hand? I'm keen to start my writing journey, but don't know how to start. Okay. Don't worry. Like all of us make mistakes, even the best editors, the number of books I have read that have been professionally edited that have spelling mistakes, commas, full stops, missing quotation marks, all sorts of things, and they were professionally edited. I have worked with so many people from an international background that I don't even notice spelling mistakes anymore. I say, oh, yeah, that's sort of that word, so I kind of figure what that means. Please don't use any reason to hold yourself back from writing. Your writing will improve over time. And even if it doesn't, it's who you are. Be proud of who you are. I would just say, start. I, I've written a lot of poems. So if you go to sueelson.com slash poems, if you read my first poems compared to my poems now, you'll see quite a significant difference of the style and nature and some are better and some are worse. You know, it's, it's all over the place. So if I can say anything, just give it a go. And don't worry that you're too young or somebody said it all before. I didn't necessarily read what somebody else wrote, but if you're in my network, I might see it. So just go out there. Um, and if it's good, it will go viral. 
is it better to share a document to my showcase page or my personal profile? Hmm, Jacqueline, I can't guarantee you an answer on this one. But if you've got a showcase page and you publish nothing there, then that's obviously not going to be very good if that comes up in search results. I suspect it will be seen by more people on your personal profile, but again, not a reason not to publish on a showcase page or a company page. Um, a lot of people think, well, it doesn't do anything, but if somebody's doing their due diligence on you and they check that so showcase page, then obviously it's going to be better for you to have something there. You get a 404 message after scanning the QR code. Oh, that's no good. Maybe the QR code is faulty. I'll check that out, Marie, and uh, message you directly with the link. Question around content and driving engagement. Um, well, read that article on engagement, content creation, and you know, getting people to engage. Um, it, it just needs to be interesting and adding value. If you are just saying sales, 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 then obviously people are not going to like that. Um, did you want to say something specific, Camilla? Yes, I wanted to elaborate on my question. Sorry, yeah. I just wanted to pop out there that I have a question. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, first of all, for this presentation. Really, really You're welcome. Helpful. Very, very comprehensive. My question is around, uh, I guess, LinkedIn etiquette around, um, you know, what to put in content. So I'm always sort of, I'm not sure how, whether I should be using emojis, for example, and how much, uh, whether I should be using, and I know that the, the recommendation in terms of hashtags is around, you know, three to five, so quite small. Um, but I sometimes use hashtags within the post itself or within the caption. And I don't know if that kind of goes against that rule. Um, one other thing I've seen as well is that um, people put in comments underneath the post to drive that initial engagement as well. And I wonder what your perspective is on those yeah. things. Okay. So my number one message would be to be authentic. Now, if you're an emoji kind of a person, put in emojis. If you're not an emoji person, put in a, a hash, a, like a tick or a number or a colour spot or, you know, something that's not a pizza picture, you know, like because it just <laughs> looks ridiculous uh, being mm. on a LinkedIn post. So it's got to be who you are, authentically you. Now, what people used to do is they realised that if they put a link in the post, then the algorithm wouldn't like it because it was taking people off LinkedIn and not keeping them on the platform. So then they say, the link is in the comments. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've just told me about some brilliant thing and then I have to scan the comments to find the damn link, there is no way I'm going to look for that link. You know, I'm just not going to be bothered. So you've got to think about the computer experience, identifying this as good quality content, and you've got to think about the user who's going to be really annoyed that they had to go to the link to get whatever it was. So another thing that I do in all of my content is I try and make sure that the content itself in the post gives value. So if I'm linking to another piece, I'll say, here are the five main points. So they've already got a sense of what they're going to find in that link, so therefore it's worthwhile. So, yes, three to five hashtags, at mention people, otherwise they're not going to be notified. Try and keep people on the platform. I saw one guy who wrote a post today and then made 10 comments himself, copy-pasting, bits from his original post. I mean, I just thought he was an idiot. You know, like it's it's not fun to see that kind of technique used to game the system. The other thing I don't like is they write the post and then they edit it and put the link in afterwards. So any mm. post that has been edited, I'm suspicious. I'm thinking somebody's gamed me here and mm. I don't trust the post. So if I've made some terrible mistake, I would delete the post and start again. I will not edit a post. And if I've left a spelling mistake in there, too bad. You know, if it's not too bad, I just leave it and move on. Because consistency and authenticity will win the day. So I went yeah. to one event and it said I needed to tweet six times a day. I don't even look at Twitter six times a day, let alone tweet six times a day. <laughs> and if I tweeted or, or posted six times a day on LinkedIn, everybody would think I was a megalomaniac and please shut up. So, again, I wouldn't be going down that path. Just make sure you do maximum of three a week, preferably one good thing a week, mix it up to be a variety of content, but stay on, on whatever it is you talk about. Like I can't talk about LinkedIn today and then talk about 
Persian cats tomorrow. I mean, it's got nothing to do with who I am or, you know, it's it's irrelevant. I, I wouldn't be sharing stuff about Persian cats all of a sudden unless I was a Persian cat breeder and, you know, I had two gigs, then it's fine. But, um, yeah, just stick to your knitting, I think, consistency, authenticity, and think about the computer experience so the computer can find the content, but think about the user experience, making it accessible to the people who would get some sort of value out of it. Does that help? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Thank You're you. Most Sue. welcome. 17 new messages. My goodness, I've got a lot here. Uh, moving to another meeting. Thank you. Google review done. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that, Bob. Uh, regarding posting birthdays, too many year of birth. Oh, my goodness. No, do not put your date of birth online. Um, it's part of your identity. I'm an ex-banker, so I definitely do not recommend putting your date of birth. I also do not recommend you wearing a low neck garment. Now, I know some women will say, I'm allowed to wear whatever I want. Well, I'm here to suggest that you want people to look at your eyes, not your chest. So, yeah. Now, to be fair, I've also told a man about his chest because he had a nice hairy chest poking out the top of his collar. So I suggested he needed to Photoshop those hairy bits out. I love a hairy chest, but we don't want to see that on LinkedIn. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm equal opportunity here. But, you know, be recognised for your capabilities, not your appearance. I, I think it's, a, you know, I've been encouraged to consider using my appearance to my advantage but I, I just never will because I wanted my work to, to stand out um, as, as being helpful. Uh, right, lots of thank yous, excellent. 70% perfect is perfect, excellent comment. Oh, you don't even have to go to 80%, so thank you for that, Catherine. So inspirational, thank you, Sue. Oh, thank you, Kushbu. Uh, thank you. Grammarly can be a helpful support. Yes, Paula, Grammarly is a fantastic little browser plugin that will check your spelling and things for you. Uh, sometimes it does too good a job because I like to write in conversational English and I find that sometimes correct grammar is different to conversational Australian English. So, you know, use it if, if that makes you feel comfortable. I have a client who is Italian-Australian and she finds it very helpful. I think she's partly dyslexic as well. So it's very good for, for that. Uh, sorry, I have to leave. Thank you, thank you. Access to all the additional resources. Yes, Danielle, that's really important. It might be an hour, but there's heaps more there if you would like to. Uh, finding out lots from the Q&A, excellent. My authenticity, yes, I'm a real person. I, I, because I run Newcomers Network for so long and there was so much content online, somebody came along to my event and said, oh, I didn't think you were a real person. But yes, I am. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, how are all the women in this call? Endorsements added. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, I call it a headshot. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, one of the best I've watched. Oh, thank you. Um, energy and encouragement and enthusiasm. Get you through the day. Yes, Chris, go for it. Uh, girl power there. And thank you for the making the information. Very digestible. It's very important for me to make sure you understand what's going on. That's why I have the slides there so you've got something written you can work with. Uh, but also you can use the voice in the video uh, afterwards as well. Now, Jacqueline, do you have a question? You've been sitting there with your camera on. Uh, I'll throw to you first. No, 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 you're just on camera. That's lovely. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but if anybody else would like to ask a question live, feel free to just unmute your microphone and I'd love to hear from you or share with me what you found most helpful from today. Anybody like to add a comment? Angela's unmuted. Did you have something? No? All right. I might turn off the recording so that we're free to talk freely and nobody will be on the recording. Uh, so thank you for those who are leaving now. And I look forward to seeing you at another LinkedIn Insights webinar. Just look for them on the sueelson.com 